designing titles and subtitles in Notion. Maybe not as easy as it seems. We're in week 7 where we look into design and typography in Notion. Today we're focusing on titles and subtitles. If you look at a typical page in Notion like this, you have a few levels. You have the main title, you have the first level titles, and then you can carry on. But the problem is that it tends to look very similar and maybe a bit boring. So we're going to look into that today. What built-in options are there? How to customize using only standard variants or standard text? how to make crazy text fonts, and maybe, finally, images can help. Let's dig in. As you know, last time we created a blog article using ChatGPT and then started using the built-in page stylings from Notion. So let's copy that and uh, carry on from where we left off. So here we have the page. I simply Alt or Option drag down here, and I get a new copy. I'll click in, and as we can see, we have done some page stylings already. Rename this to call it Titles and Subtitles Styling in Notion. Then we'll go up to the Page menu and reset the font style here to the default one. So here we have our nice little blog article limerick, and we can see what we do. If we look at the first title here, one thing I think we should remember here is that this title will also show up in the sidebar. So let's expand the sidebar here so we see what we're doing. We're in week 7 and we're looking at titles and subtitles here. If we go here and we start writing, we can see that, let's say we use all caps version. This gives a very different look and feel and it also propagates here. A quite popular one and one that I think looks quite nice is if you start adding spaces between all the letters. I mean, now we ran out of space horizontally, but you get the idea. But the interesting thing is that in the sidebar, Notion will actually collapse multiple spaces, so it doesn't matter how many spaces you add, it, you will only get one here. I don't think this is a huge problem to me. If you want to get around this problem, you can potentially add some kind of separator text here, and that will make Notion a little bit happier, and it will show the titles a bit different here. And this you can see an example of in the last episode where we created and designed our TV series tracker. Then you can do the other way around. You can decide to use only small letters. And this shows up a little bit different as well. But I mean, soon you start getting quite annoyed with this. So what, what options do we have? Well, you can use the built-in emojis on Windows. That's Windows and Dot. And on Mac, I believe it's Mac and Space. So you can use the heart emoji here, for example, and you will see it shows up here. The interesting thing is that it's not exactly the same. So sometimes you will see a slightly more stylized version first, and then it kind of simplifies a little bit through Notion. So I don't know if you saw that. Let's, sh let's show that again. So we have a green check mark. And once we click out of the title, it turns to something else. And I mean, maybe this is close enough and it's maybe nice or a feature that Notion styles it a little bit. I, I can't really say. I think it's a little bit strange. The um, final thing you can do with the main title, the page title, is that you can create some really fancy and funky looking text. So as you might know, there are a lot more letters in a font than you might expect. Apart from the normal letters, numbers, the special symbols that you know, there is a plethora of other languages. It, Arabic is supported for most things. There are specific math symbols. And you can actually use or abuse these quite a bit. This little cool text fonts page will create a few suggestions. I'll uh, put a link to it below. Let's say we'll like this hollow text here. We'll just simply copy that and we'll paste it here. And as you can see, it's actually shown as we would expect. And you can also see that it's shown here in the left. And this is the same for all these texts that maybe you want a little bit of old styling here. That's something you can do. Maybe you want something crazy down here. So, I mean, maybe these are a bit much, but let's try just for the fun of it. As you can see, it, it works. 
how did we even get these? I mean, so so these are the normal letters, and let's say in French you can you can use these different accents. And if you take it to the extreme, you can see that you can add on each letter a lot of these accents. And then finally, maybe we want to use this funky text as our styling for the day. This of course creates a very very different looking page title. I think it's probably one of the better choices we have in Notion. As I said, I'll put a link to this quite nice page. If we go down to the next level, I mean, of course, as you know, we can always style by turning different uh, blocks into, let's say, a quote, and then it looks nicer. But today we're focusing on titles. One hash symbol for heading one, two for heading two, and three for heading three, and then it's automatically generated. And these are the default stylings. Same here, you can't really change them much. You can uh, decide to add different emojis, that's always nice. You can see that these collapse to a little bit of a simplistic version as well. The other option you have when we look at title blocks are the toggles. So if you look at the toggle list, you have a kind of title here, title. We expand it and we write content. You also saw that we had H1 toggle heading. So we can say title, content. So we can say H2 toggle, title. And if you if you want to go to the content of a toggle, you can simply press tab here. So let's press tab and we say content. And finally, we of course have H3, title and content. All right. So as you can see here, we have the standard titles and the toggles that can collapse. So the toggles are really nice since they can structure the content really well. So, I mean, let's exemplify this a little bit. So we drag the first paragraph here, we remove this one and we collapse it. And then we get a lot shorter structure and nicer structure. So that's nice. For the normal headings, as you know, of course, you simply put the content between them, just as, as you would expect. That's nice as well. All right, but how do we improve on this? I mean, the, the, uh, the text styling we looked at before is of course the same. So we can go back here and say, my fancy heading three, and uh, maybe this feels like the styling of the day. We can of course use the same here, so we copy this here and we see that while it doesn't look exactly the same it's it's quite similar so maybe we want a small m here to to uh, to keep it that's great it's almost impossible to read but yeah the same concept applies here so what else can we do i mean of course we can color things so that's always nice we can uh, set the text color to pink we can set the background color to pink. And as you know, these don't really work together. If you want a little bit of space, you can create that manually. You can center things manually, which is very cumbersome. And uh, you can, of course, still use these types of stylings, which are quite common. If we just quickly go back to the colors here, there is a way to combine background color and text color. So I'm showing that very quickly now, and uh, then we'll focus the next episode on that if you're interested. Let's finish this one off with adding a few special characters. Now we're adding colons to create a little bit of a box here in the front and in the back to make a nice final visual impression for this text style. So that's quite handy. So now we have three very different looking headings. Same here as we showed in the main title. We can do something like a double dash, which creates a long dash. And then we can use the space one. So, heading one. And a long dash. So, I mean, this is, of course, also a quite nice styling. You can, again, go in and you can set the background color. Maybe use, we use gray this one, this time. And if we expand it, since this is a toggle, the entire block is gray. So we get a very nice structure apart from just the heading. 
The absolute final thing I thought I'd show you today is um, maybe a little bit of a trick. So, for reference, let's create the second heading here so we see what it looks like. We again go to another web page. This time we go to the font generator. And what is that, you might ask? Well, this is a place, and there are of course many like it, where you can uh, create images of text. We'll write up here Notion Expert Heading and we press Go. We find some heading that we really like here. Let's uh, use this fancy script one. We can select different font sizes, so let's create a quite big one. Very nice. We uh, pick some favorite color, so a purple looking one. Then we can see down here about this font. So we have the author of it, we have the license for it, and uh, download as PNG, JPEG, GIF, or print. And uh, normally what you want here is PNG, since that supports transparency and gradient transparencies. We'll um, copy it, and I'll simply drag it here to Notion. As you can see, the transparency is black, and then it is turned into what it should look like. As you can see right now here, we get a little bit of an attribution here. We'll keep it here for now. This is where we leave things off today. We went from very standard headings to really funky ones, different ways of creating those. Next time, we're going to take a deep dive into colors. See you then. Thank you very much for joining and have a very nice day.